Hello. I'm going to show you guys today how to find the profit maximizing output for perfectly competitive firms. Right, so you want to remember that in perfect competition, firms are able to sell as much of this product as they want so long as they accept the market price. Right, everybody's selling an identical good. So really for these firms, it's a matter of deciding how much do you want to sell. I've got a table on the board here behind me that might represent some perfectly competitive firm. So in our table, we have the quantities of the good that they might produce, ranging from zero down to 10. The total cost that's going to go along with producing each respective level of output. And then the marginal cost, which measures the extra cost as they decide to produce one more unit as you're moving down each, each row in our table. For the purposes of our demonstration, we want to assume that the price that this firm has to charge is going to be 10 bucks. That's going to be key for us. That will be given to you in any sort of uh, setup that you encounter with these types of problems. So the price is 10. The table in here represents the firm's cost. The question is, which quantity should this firm elect to produce in order to get the highest possible amount of profit? There's a rule of thumb that you should use for these types of problems, and that is to find the one quantity, right, zero up to 10, such that the marginal revenue is exactly equal to the marginal cost. Right, let's write that right here. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. It's the profit maximizing rule. This is never going to steer you wrong. Find that quantity for perfectly competitive firms and other firms as well. That's going to show you the quantity that will leave this business with the highest possible profit. And that's what we're after. So let's take a look here and, uh, and try to find that with our table. Right? So one thing about perfect competition you want to keep in mind is that price is equal to the marginal revenue. Every time these firms sell one more unit, their revenue, their total revenue is going to increase by whatever the price is. You sell one more unit, for 10 bucks, it's going to cause the total revenue to increase by 10 bucks. So that's why price equals marginal revenue. So what we want to do is just go through this uh, unit by unit and see if the marginal revenue and marginal costs are equivalent or if instead the firm should be producing more. So let's start with the very first unit that the firm could sell, quantity one. The marginal cost there is only four bucks. It costs them four dollars more to make this. They can sell it though for 10. Marginal revenue is higher than marginal cost and that means their profits are going to rise if they make that first unit. So definitely, they want to go ahead and make the first one and entertain making the second. You want to do this calculation again. Marginal revenue is 10. Marginal cost is only 2. The firm should go ahead and produce that too. So the second unit is profitable. Same thing for the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. All the way down here until we get to this eighth unit. Right? At that point, for unit number eight, the marginal cost is 10, and the marginal revenue is 10. So those two things are equal. So the logic is the firm should stop producing right at that particular point. Make all the units up to the eighth one and stop right there. That's how they're going to get the highest possible profit. The reason why is because units after the eighth one end up costing this firm more to produce than they would receive an extra revenue. Cost them another 12 bucks to make this, Whereas they only are going to receive another 10 bucks when they sell it. You shouldn't do that. Your profits will fall. Same thing for the 10th unit. You uh, would get 10 bucks when you sell that product, but it costs you another 14 to make the 10th one. Don't do it. You want to stop right there where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Okay. I've got a setup right here that's doing this analysis with a table. Uh, you should also be comfortable doing these types of problems with graphs. Um, so let me put that on the board here really quickly. So with a perfectly competitive firm, we're going to put dollars on that vertical axis and use that to measure both revenue and cost. And then the quantity, we're going to measure horizontally. That's how much stuff the firm is producing. First up, I'm going to draw in the firm's marginal revenue curve. Marginal revenue is going to look like this. And in perfect competition, just like we were saying before, that's also equal to their price and also equal to the demand curve that they're going to face. How high you want to put that curve is going to correspond with whatever price the firm is facing. So if we're saying they have a $10 price, then that's where this demand curve should be situated. 
take a look at what's happening here with marginal cost, right? It's declining at first and then starts going up. So I want to show it just like that when I draw in this marginal cost curve. Right? That one's typically drawn upward sloping looking like this. And then the final curve that you need here for saying something about profit is the average total cost curve. And I don't have that from the table, but I could get it really easily just by taking total cost divided by quantity. The pattern that you're going to see is that average total cost is typically falling and then rising again, somewhat U-shaped, looking like that ATC. Right, so using the same logic we were talking about with the tables here, we want to find which quantity is profit maximizing for this firm. We just established that that's going to be the eighth unit, or marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So that should correspond to this particular spot. Right there. The firm should keep producing up to the eighth unit, stop right there, and not go on to producing units nine. In terms of calculating the firm's profit, it's going to be equal to total revenue minus total cost. That's the definition of profit, all the money that the firm collects minus all the costs that they have. Uh, we find that here on this graph by recognizing that total revenue is calculated as price times quantity, and total cost can be calculated as quantity times average total cost. That's just the number of units that you produce multiplied by what it costs the business to make each and every one. So then, looking at our graph here, price times quantity for total revenue, that's going to be 80 bucks. This amount right here. That height is the price. That horizontal distance is the quantity. The whole big rectangle there would be their total revenue. Their total cost would be that quantity of 8 times whatever the average total cost is for making eight units, which we get right up here. Okay, so that would correspond with this spot right here. Profit then is the difference between those two. Right? The big rectangle here is the firm's total revenue, price times quantity. The smaller rectangle underneath is their total cost, quantity times average total cost. And so the difference, which I'm shading in right here, going to be the profit for this firm. Right, so whatever area would correspond with what we've shaded in here in this little rectangle would indicate the amount of profit that this firm is experiencing. And of course that should line up exactly with any profit calculations you do over here with the numbers.